Hello everybody and welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so much for joining me on this very dark, gloomy, blustery day. It is very rainy and windy outside. We are now in November. Happy November. We are kicking off the month with a planty reset, which I have not done. <laughs> I have not done. I'm so bad at doing this every month. Really, I am. Um, but we're doing it. We're doing it right now for November to get us on the right track for the month. So throughout these videos, I like to do some organizing, make sure I'm stocked up on supplies, um, sometimes some cleaning. And then I also like to throw other random things into this video that I don't want to make a whole separate video for. So I'm going to be talking about a few of my favorite plants that I've been enjoying lately. And yeah, it's just going to be us hanging out, getting organized, getting prepped for the next month. Oh yeah. And I also like to kind of plan ahead on what plant chores I'm going to be doing over the next month um, and kind of set some goals, stuff like that. So I hope that that sounds good to you. I've actually prepared us a list. So I'll give you a little rundown of what I have planned. So I first have an unboxing of some supplies that I ordered. I actually have three boxes that we need to open. So we're gonna do that. Also just kind of like chat plant supplies. I want to refill my sphagnum moss bin. So I need to go downstairs, grab my sphagnum brick and then soak it. I want to create my prop box for the philodendron domesticum because I'm pretty sure in one of those packages there is like another one of my mini prop box things that I ordered. I also wanted to make another batch of my pest spray mix and kind of update y'all on how, uh, kind of like my, my current thoughts on the DIY pest spray and how it's been going. And then I want to chat about a few of my favorite plants that I've really been loving lately. I have some cool things that I wanna show you um, before, just while I can, because I'll, I don't know if there's still gonna be happening when I do my November walkthrough. Um, and then I'm going to be doing, I want to put some of my liquid fertilizers into, if you watched, if you keep up with this series, several months ago, I ordered like pump bottles that I plan to put my various liquid fertilizers into. I finally wanna do that today because I'm gonna start using my general hydroponics fertilizers again. So I wanna get those set up and like label them and everything. I want to hopefully wipe down my calyx shelf just cause it's like, it's just a little dusty and gross on the top and take down some of the Halloween decor that's on there. And then of course I'm going to plan some of my chores, repots and think about my planty goals for November. Whew. So <laughs> we have a lot to tackle. Let's just jump into the unboxing to start. Okay, so we have the three boxes here. I saved them to unbox with you on this video because I just think that it's so fun getting new plant supplies and seeing what people use and seeing what people order. I get almost as excited to open plant accessories and plant supplies as I do actual plants. So um, all of these things are just from Amazon and let's just start with the first box. Okay, so this is, oh, my lettuce grow is gonna water right now. Um, this is actually one of the little prop boxes I got. This is probably the one we're gonna use today, I guess. So they come in various sizes. This is the one that y'all have seen. This shorter one that I put the Alocasia Maharani Corms into. There's a few more. I'm noticing it's kind of warm probably from the, because it's sitting on like a barina light that's um, stuck below the shelf. That's actually probably really nice for them. Um, so I have my Alocasia Maharani Corms in here and then I threw in the philodendron, kind of smell like a swamp. <laughs> I threw in the philodendron domesticum wet sticks, but I wanna get those out because this is just very crowded now. So I ordered, a couple more of these mini prop boxes. If you missed my video, I think it was a plant chores video that where I made that mini prop box and I was talking about how I kind of want to shift away from using like big bulky bins and I just want to use these like smaller, more manageable and also just cuter little acrylic storage thingies. How do I get in here? So 
So they come in various sizes and I thought that I would try out getting a taller one. A lot of them were sold out or like wouldn't ship for a super long time. I don't know what the heck was going on. It, it might be because I ordered these from amazon.com and I'm in Canada. So if you're shopping from the US, maybe they, they have, you know, like better options. Um, anyways, I'll have everything linked, but I decided to get a taller one because I just thought it might be handy for props that actually have leaves. Now this is very narrow. I should probably get a longer one but like i said i'm kind of wanting to keep things like compact i'm not wanting to do a lot of propagations this could even be like a little mini greenhouse or like a little um like closed like a little cloche or something for a plant it's kind of cute so i did order another one of these but it's not here or at least i don't think it's here yet it said it was delayed or something but i think it's just another one of that smaller size that i already have Oh no, I hate when stickers don't come off smoothly. Don't do this to me. Oh. Slow and steady. Okay, only one more piece that I have to try to get off. Okay. Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna put my philodendron domesticum wet sticks in here. This is pretty narrow to put all of them in. I'll have to transfer them out once they actually start growing. But now that I'm seeing this size in person, it would be really good to acclimate. Like if you have cuttings or like, you know, small, I'm trying to see like what I have to grab. I don't really have anything next to me that I could use as an example. But you know, a lot of the newer Hoyas that I've received that are like small cuttings, um, could be acclimated in something like this. So it could be dual purpose, but I'm probably just gonna use it as a little propagation bin for now. So once the next one comes, I'm gonna have three total of these little acrylic boxes. And I think I'm just gonna leave it at that and really try to just not have, it's overwhelming when I just have a million propagations. And sometimes I get rude comments from people, not from you guys, but often like if a reel starts getting views from like random people and people get so upset and they're like, oh, I hope you kept all of those propagations. And it's like, there's no shame in not keeping every single propagation. Um, just in case you needed to hear that, if you're overwhelmed with propagations, it's okay to not keep them. Okay, let's go ahead and open the next box. I'm excited about this one. Okay. Oh my gosh, this looks small. This looks smaller than I thought. Okay, so I ordered some new self-watering pots to try out because I have been putting more of my plants into pond and I want to continue doing that. So I ordered a couple of different style, like I've never tried these ones before and I ordered them in two different sizes. So let's open them up and take a peek. I got five inch and then is this seven inch? This is, doesn't say. Oh my gosh oh my gosh okay they're not what i thought <laughs> they're not what i thought oh my gosh okay i literally had a suspicion oh wait yes they are yes they are okay what's going on okay it's all good <laughs> so i saw this and i thought that they were like the ones that i have right now where they just have this tray in the bottom but this whole part is the inner pot so you can remove the whole um inner pot and then this is the outer pot so if you have been watching my videos where specifically where i deal with pond or self-watering i have where is one oh my gosh the fry deck i'm not going to take that down that's way too big they work great but they don't have a um, removable inner pot. There's just like a tray that sits in the bottom and then you pot the plant in and you can never remove it. You can never flush it through. Um, you can't like see the roots or check on them or anything. And I was just curious to compare to 
something that's not such a closed system and people always comment like doesn't it freak you out that you can't take the plants out or you can't check on the roots and i'm like well not really because i haven't had a problem and i've been using those pots for years but just for curiosity's sake i thought the next time that i order self-watering pots i would get some where you can remove the inner part so that's that's what i did i'm not really a fan of this gray color i thought that they would be a little bit darker they're kind of like a mid-toned gray I mean, it's not bad, it's just not... You know what I should do is put stickers on these. I have a lot of stickers and that could make them just a lot more fun. So maybe I'll do that. But it comes with... Oh my gosh, it comes with a little spade thing? What the heck? This is so cutie. Okay. Oh, it comes with some little extras, some little ID tags. All right. And then we have our... Oh, and even a little marker. Oh my gosh, they're really going all out here. <laughs> um, and then just the little water gauges. Now I really wanted to make sure that I was picking pots that came with a water gauge just because I do find it really helpful. There's a, like an instruction or info thing and that's it. I mean, these look great to me. I am excited to try them out. I guess this is the front. Yeah. I'll definitely update on my thoughts and then let's open the smaller ones oh yeah so what size are these then i don't even know oh this is seven inch okay it is seven perfect and then yeah i got the five inch just to have some options i think i'm gonna like these pots i have i have a good feeling about it So they are literally the same. These packs come with three pots each. They're the same, just a smaller version. These come with the tags and the marker as well. And this is what the outside of them looks like. I think these came in white as well. I went with the darker color. So there's the five inch. Cute. I'm so excited to use these. Really, really excited. I love that that's just like the whole system. Like, boom, done. You have everything you need, except for the pawn, obviously. Okay, moving on to the last box. Y'all are gonna think I'm a little unhinged because it is a bit of an unhinged purchase, but it needed to be done. Okay, so this is a 12 pack of isopropyl alcohol, which seems so crazy, but it's just so expensive to go to the store and buy them individually. Um, so I looked on Amazon and tried to find the best deal that I could. So yeah, this came with 12 of these, 70%, that's what you want. I kept, like, you go through these so much, I think you get... Um, let me think about this. This would be four. This would make 16 liters. There's 500 mils here and this would make 16 liters. So my batch that I do, this would make that four times. So it's only refilling my sprayer four times and then I'm, I'm already, I've already gone through one of these, which is crazy. Um, so I got that big pack just to keep me completely stocked up so that I can continue to make that pest spray. After I ordered that, I posted in my Discord because I just thought that that was so, just such a weird and funny purchase. Um, and somebody commented that they find theirs it, like in a big size in Costco. And I was like, oh, that's so smart. I did not even think to check Costco, but I will check there next time and see if I can get a better deal there. Because I feel like that's something that it would be a better deal at Costco. I just didn't think of it. 
so that is all the supplies that i have stocked up on and i did end up placing my order on russo plant care i was mentioning in my moss pole video well y'all saw if you watched that video i really need more pole extensions i'm completely out of my russo poles um and then there was just some other stuff that i ended up getting on there as well so i actually have a pretty big russo order coming in um which I will probably make an unboxing video for or like add it into a video just because I, I love unboxing plant supplies. So um, I will have that coming soon, which I'm really excited about. Okay, I'm gonna put all this stuff away and get all of my recycling situated here and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I just went downstairs and grabbed my sphagnum moss brick and my almost entirely empty sphagnum moss bin. We used this all up in my moss pole maintenance video i had so many extensions to do i think i did 11 of them so if you haven't seen that moss pole extravaganza video yet um i think that was the last one that i would have posted but i'm just gonna do the rest of this brick i guess and this is the last of my sphagnum moss so i'm gonna have to restock soon which is crazy it lasts a long time but it, it is very expensive to buy these bricks I feel like the larger quantity that you buy, the better price it is, which is why I get like the biggest one that's available. So this was a big compressed brick and I've used this, like I've broken off bits of it and filled this bin several times now. So we are finally at the end of the road here. I'm just gonna add water. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to let it absorb this water for a little while. I do store my sphagnum moss damp, which is a question that I was getting on my moss pole video. People asking like, how do you not get mold? Do you store it damp? Do you close the lid on the bin? And I do store it damp, like I will fully soak this and then I try to dump out the excess water and then I just pop the lid on and throw it in my plant supply closet and then I just grab it whenever I need to use it. And for some reason I never get mold. I don't know why, but I just don't. And I never like open it up to air it out or anything. So I don't know. I don't know, it just works for me and it's the most convenient way to store it. So that's just the way that I do it. I can link below some of my favorite places that I get sphagnum moss. I usually will like shop around. I have my brands that I like. Um, so the One Mile Sphagnum Moss Crystal Star Nursery carries that. And then um, the, what's it called? The Best Grow. Uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss that is sold. There's a few different retailers that you can get that one from. I'll link the one that I often use down below. And then Raven Vision Orchids, that's actually the one that I'm using today, where this one came from. Um, so I'll link a few options and I usually just shop around, like when I'm looking to stock up, I'll just look on the several different websites that I check and see if anyone's having a sale. And then if they are, that's usually the one that I will get. So since Black Friday is coming up, I should keep it in my mind that I need more sphagnum moss because maybe I can get a deal. Anyways, I'm just going to let this soak and maybe we'll make up my batch of the pest solution so that that is all restocked and ready to go. Okay, so let's mix up a batch of the pest solution together. I figured I'll do oops, figured I'll do it on camera because I keep getting a lot of comments asking what like whenever I refer to the DIY pest treatment that I'm using. Um, so I figured we would just do it together and I'd give you kind of an update on my thoughts on it. I will link the original video from Liquider in the description so you can go check it out. It's a lot more in depth about explaining the purpose behind all the ingredients and everything so um yeah you can check that out if you want to learn more about it but basically it's just water hydrogen peroxide isopropyl alcohol tea tree castile soap and peppermint castile soap and i've been using it for how long has it been now maybe around like six weeks and as my regular viewers know it has 
helped the pet situation a lot in my collection i like that it's diy you can just go go grab the ingredients at you know the grocery store the pharmacy whatever very accessible and i find that in general it has been really effective and worked really well oh and i also like that it's all safe ingredients like it's nothing toxic um so you don't have to worry about it like getting on your skin and stuff like that but as some of my regular viewers know it has caused some destruction on my plants specifically on emergent leaves so any like soft delicate leaf or plants that are highly variegated stuff like that i have seen some damage i will say i haven't seen as much damage as when i first started mixing this up i don't really know why that is going forward i'm just trying to be mindful of any new emergent leaves or any delicate leaves it doesn't happen every time like on it's only been on certain plants so for me it is that price is worth like the benefits of using this solution so i am going to continue using it obviously i just bought a freaking 12 pack of the isopropyl alcohol but i've been really happy with how it's working out especially for spider mites it works like incredibly well um so highly recommend trying it out if you have been having problems with spider mites also works for i think it's like any soft bodied pest um it works for and it also just leaves your leaves nice and shiny and clean looking so i really like that because that's kind of another problem that i have and why i don't like some other pest treatments um like the diatomaceous earth i get comments about why i don't use that anymore and it's not that i'll never use it again it's just that i i kind of had the intention of like putting that all over my whole collection letting it work for a few weeks and then washing it all off just to kind of get the pest population down and it worked really well for that and it served its purpose but now i'm wanting to move on to something that i can use more regularly that's going to keep my plants looking nice and everything and that's also the reason that i haven't been using beneficials my experience with beneficials was so positive it worked super well when i used them the summer before like two summers ago i guess the summer before the one that's just passed um it worked amazingly the only reason that i haven't gone back to that is just because of aesthetics like i don't like the way that it looks i don't like having the sachets hanging on all of the plants and everything and then you like can't wash the leaves off and they can start just looking really like dusty and gross and yeah i don't know i think that beneficials beneficials work great and i would use them again like if like i i'm not writing it off as something i would never use again but right now i'm just happy with this diy situation um so i'm going to continue using it just to maintain my collection and keep pests down to a minimum so i use this electric sprayer this is like my favorite sprayer ever it is so awesome and i love that the button to spray is on the top here because my other one it's on the bottom so you can accidentally push it so easily um so i really like that it's up here i think i've only had to charge this once since i got it and it has a two liter capacity um so it lasts for a while before you have to refill it so yeah i love this thing so much it makes spraying for pests just so much easier because when i use my bottles where you need to like actually pump the sprayer it literally gets so painful in your hand so let's just make up a quick batch right now so that it's ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and put four cups of water. Oh, and I don't normally use filtered water. I'm just using this right now for this demonstration so I don't have to be at the sink. One cup. Four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my hydrogen peroxide. I only have 3%, it's better to use 1%, so I just use a smaller amount and just put it into the water here so it dilutes. 
So I'm only doing half a teaspoon of the hydrogen peroxide. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my soaps. So it's going to be two tablespoons of each. This is the peppermint. Oh yeah, and I've had so many comments from people telling me why it's burning my leaves. And it's so funny because everybody says something different. Like some people say, oh, it's way too much Castile soap. That's why your leaves are burning. And then other people say, oh no, you shouldn't be using hydrogen peroxide. That's why your leaves are burning. And then other people say, oh, it's the isopropyl alcohol. Like you're using way too much isopropyl alcohol. And then other people say like, no, I use straight isopropyl alcohol in my plants and it doesn't hurt them, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So it's just funny how like, Everyone has something different to say about it. And I don't put my plants right under light after I do this. That's another thing that people are saying like, oh, are you putting your plants right under grow lights after? And I'm not, like I let them dry off first before I do that because I know that they can burn. So I don't know y'all, I don't know. My only solution is to just be careful around new leaves and ideally not spray them down or try to treat plants when they don't have an emergent leaf like a baby leaf okay and then isopropyl alcohol is the last thing that we're putting in and this calls for um half a cup oh dear just bust into that with my nail All right, so that's everything. This solution is now ready to go. I'm just gonna get the lid back on. I'm probably gonna do some treatments tonight. So now this is all mixed up. So it's nice to have a batch just prepared. I can just grab it and start cracking. So that's kind of my update on how that's been going and my thoughts on that treatment solution and everything. Um, my pest situation is pretty good. I don't really have spider mites anymore. I am, however, still having mealies pop up, which is so freaking annoying. I honestly think that I'm starting to hate mealies even more than thrips, which is really saying something because if you're a long time viewer, you know how I feel about thrips. Oh my gosh, they literally terrify me. But now if I am ever able to completely eradicate mealy bugs from my home, I will freak out if I ever see one in the future because it just seems that they keep coming back. Like the plant will be completely clean and you won't see them for a while and you'll think, okay, they're gone. And then they just pop up out of nowhere again. Like it is insanity. So I've currently had mealies pop up on my Hoyas that are on the upper window. So I've been treating those and trying to like stick to a schedule and stay on top of that. And then I still have the odd one on my Vitsjo shelf. It's definitely not as bad as it used to be, but they're still out there. They are still out here just need to stay in my routine of treating. And the reason that I think things have popped back up a little bit, like in terms of the mealy bugs and stuff is just because I was not doing proper plant care for several consecutive weeks. I was just doing like the bare minimum when it came to like watering. Even then a lot of my plants were getting thirsty and stuff, which also makes them more prone to pests. So I'm really glad that I can be back into routine now because when you are treating pests and then you stop and it, you haven't completely eradicated it yet, it can just come back full force, which is really annoying. But pests are just part of plant parent life and of, you know, keeping house plants. So try not to stress about it too much. Anyways, that's it for our pest solution talk. Oh, it looks like I need to add more water into our sphagnum bin here. So I'll do that. All right, so while we're waiting for that moss bin to continue to soak and everything, I thought it might be nice to take a little interlude right now and show you some of my favorite plants, plants that I've really been enjoying lately.
for various reasons, which you shall see. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the first one and you guys, you guys, I'm obsessed. Are you ready for it? Oh my goodness. I honestly am speechless at this flower. I am so in awe of holiday cactus blooms just any holiday cactus honestly really any like jungle cactus bloom but to have this variegated one blooming is just so incredibly magical oh my goodness i love it so much even when i showed my boyfriend he was like oh my gosh like that is so stunning i was like i know i'm obsessed with her and she has several more on the way these two over here she's kind of heavy so maybe i can take her out of her um ceramic pot to hold her up Okay, yeah, do you see right here and right here we have some that are just starting to open and then we also have others like they're all in different stages But this one that is opened already. Oh my goodness. I feel like this camera like the lighting right now for some reason Is not fully doing it justice, but oh my goodness It's just magical like it's it's truly just magical and Thanksgiving cactus blooms in particular like this plant this is why the variegated one is so just like this is why i wanted it for so long and why it's so special to me to have such a cool version of this plant is because thanksgiving cactus blooms are one of the first plants and i feel like i don't talk about this a lot because you know people always ask me like what was my first plant and i'm always like my marble queen pothos greta we know this but i never talk about how important thanksgiving cactus were to my planty journey because this was the first not this one, I had just a green one. And it was the first plant that I feel like just got me interested and like made me in awe of plants and like really brought them into my awareness because I was given a regular green Thanksgiving cactus, literally just one from the grocery store. And when it bloomed, y'all, I was not prepared. I was shook to my core when I saw the incredible flowers that these plants produce. And it's such a common plant. Like I'm sure that they're fully stocked in the grocery stores, the big box stores everywhere right now. And I think that everyone should have one because they are just so incredibly stunning when they bloom. I'll put a photo of what my green one looked like, completely covered in flowers and buds, just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> this has turned into a bit of a rant about, I guess a rave about holiday cactus, but like I truly love them so much. The flowers are just, absolutely incredible um and i think that they deserve more love and i'm so excited that i now have um christmas cactus and an easter cactus uh maybe i'll go grab them and give you a little update on those too okay so i think that this one is the easter cactus right here they have rounder more kind of like softly scalloped leaves there i'm gonna have to label them but i'm pretty sure this is the easter and this came to me as cuttings and it's got lots of roots in there now. I actually rooted this in the Molly's Orchid mix and it seemed to work really well. And then I'm pretty sure that this one is the Christmas cactus. I've had these both rooting and now growing under the Soltec Grove light, which I really like for propagations. It works really well and for like succulents and stuff like that, they seem to really enjoy it. But yeah, we have lots of healthy roots on this one. Again, it's just in the organ mix. To me, the like edges of this one look kind of in between a Thanksgiving cactus and an Easter cactus. Like they're a little bit softer. The Thanksgiving cactus has the really like spiky, um, like it looks a lot different. Let me try to show you. Do you see how it's very spiky? Very pronounced, like spiky kind of edges to the leaves. I don't wanna bother it too much. But um, yeah, they all have, oh my gosh, I'm like so nervous. I'm gonna disturb the blooms. They all have just really stunning flowers and come in like different colors of flowers, which is very fun. So yeah, am I obsessed with this? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. Love me a holiday cactus for sure. And tis the freaking season. Okay, my next favorite that I wanted to show you slash give a little update on is my pingdom. I am so obsessed with this thing. I cannot believe how successful this project was. I have a whole video where I put this together um, and showed the whole process. So I can link that if you wanna check it out. 
but I don't know, just because I had never done something like this before, I didn't really know how, how the plants were gonna do, um, especially with them just rooting onto the raw pumice stone here. It's just the freaking coolest thing ever that they're growing and doing well. And it sincerely brings me joy anytime I look at it. I feel like it is such an interesting piece to have on my plant shelf and all of the pings are doing so well. You can see this massive, I forget, is this, this might be Ignata. I forget which ones I planted in here, to be honest, but I don't even really care about the IDs. I just love having them all in here. But this giant pink one right here is like on turbo mode. She just had three flowers. There's two left, but it's so cool to see them flower. This guy on the edge here is splitting into two, if you can see that. I don't even know what, what the idea is on that one either. I think that the one I'm most excited to see bloom. Oh my gosh, another one has split down here. That is so crazy. These are so easy to divide. Like you can go from having one ping to having so many because they're so easy to propagate and divide. You can propagate them from like leaf pulling or they just divide on their own like this. But I think that this one right here is the golden eye which is one that has like a buttercream yellow bloom and that's why i bought it was for the bloom so it will be really cool if that one ends up blooming for me it's settled in really well so hopefully it will one day i just have these living oh okay sorry i keep seeing things it looks like there's blooms coming in on a different one too um but i just have these on my vids show plant shelf under barina lights and it's super happy and my other pings are doing really well also they are on my south window, just hanging out over there. I have been watering all of my carnivorous plants with the zero water pitcher that I was just using earlier. Um, and they seem to be doing well. I mean, they were doing well before that, but I just figured I might as well use that pitcher for them since it's supposed to be like best practice to give them either distilled or use that zero water pitcher. But yeah, this just makes me so, so happy. It's like the cutest little fairy garden and yeah, I love it so much. So I just had to highlight this one. Okay, and I'll just show you one more plant since this is just supposed to be like a mini little favorites thing. I'm actually glad that I just grabbed this one because it is super dry and I feel like I just watered it not long ago. So I'm gonna need to water it again, but it is my variegated dragon scale so i showed y'all in the last i think update video that this new leaf was emerging and when i unfurled it a little bit i could just see this corner and i oh my gosh cadence is really making some noises back there i could mostly see this corner so i was concerned that this was not going to have a ton of variegation and uh, i mean a lot of it is green but what i love about this is this sectoral variegation right here that is so pretty and it's honestly really different than um, some other leaves that I've gotten on this plant. Like this one is very marbly, but then this one has more of the kind of sectoral look. And it's just, it's so big and it just looks so cool. So yeah, I love this one so much. I think I'm going to need to find a different spot for it though, because now it's growing super close to the grow light. And I think it's getting a little bit bleached from that. So I'm going to have to move this somewhere else or yeah, I don't know where I'm going to put it to be honest with you but yeah it's just stunning i love the variegated dragon scale so much this did go through a bit of a tough time at one point but i feel like we are really making our comeback now and there's also a little baby that's popping out leaves in here as well so super cute oh wow this one has really nice variegation you see that that is stunning so yeah i love her so much and i'm gonna go water her now before i put her back Okay, I'm just looking at our list and I think now I'm going to go grab my pump bottles and my fertilizers and we can get those transferred over and also get them labeled and everything. Okay, so I was saying recently how I want to go or start reincorporating using my general hydroponics flora series. Also have the Calmeg and I also have the diamond nectar. Now I used to use this stuff religiously and then, I don't know, I guess I just got lazy and I figured that I would just start using up the miracle Grow that I have, which has worked great, like really, really well. Um, but now that I have more plants in pond and everything, I figured that I should, I have all this general hydroponic stuff sitting here. So I am going to start using it again. Um, and 
it is going to be so much easier and make me more inclined to use it if it is in pump bottles rather than having to rather than having to pour these bottles out because it gets very messy to pour out of those ones if you have these bottles then you probably know but i got these little glass bottles that i'm going to be transferring into and i'm hoping that this system is going to work well for me i've had these sitting for months with plans to do this and i just never did it so here we go we're doing it maybe i should lower you a little bit okay so i'll just get them all put together quickly and i have so i have five different things i think yeah so i do have another pack of the bottles so i'll take one out of there And I might use the three extra bottles I have in the future for other things because I have, you know, I have lots of things. I have Super Thrive. I have silica that I'm like scared to use. I have Kelpie. I have cactus fertilizer, although that one's fine because it has a dropper. But, you know, there's just like a lot of things that I could put in these bottles. There we go. And they also look so cute. Or at least I think they're gonna look cute and they're all labeled and everything. So has anybody watched My Sweet Bobby on Netflix? Because it is living in my brain rent-free. I was shook watching that. I feel like sometimes I can watch these documentaries and I kind of have, like I've, I will either like, either like, whoops, am I well? I will either guess what's going on or you know, you, you find out and you're like, oh, like, okay, this makes sense, whatever, whatever. But this one, if y'all want a wild documentary, it's about a catfish. Oh my gosh, it's so sad. Like I feel, oh, I feel so bad for this woman. But watch it if you're looking for something to watch on Netflix. It's not like a series or anything. It's just one, I guess, like movie. If anyone has seen it, let me know because holy smokes, were you as shook as I was? Like I did not, I did not see that coming. So I guess I'll do the labels first or else I know I'm going to start mixing things up. It's my little label maker, she's so cute. Okay, so let's do this one first, Flora Micro. Flora my, whoops, Micro. I always, whoops, what's going on? Oh, how cute. <gasps> There's a plant one. <gasps> Look at this one with the flowers and the little sprout. I think I'm gonna use that border. Perfect. Look how cute that is. I love it. There we go. I think they're supposed to be waterproof labels as well. All right, next we are going to do flora grow and i'm gonna change the frame just for funsies there's one that has like plant vines <laughs> look at that Okay, next is going to be Flora Bloom. This is why I'm doing this because there's so many parts to this. Like you need to 
pump out or like use so many different liquids, which is why it's a pain in the butt. But they are good fertilizers, especially for hydroponics or semi-hydroponics. why I printed that one again but okay <laughs> here is flora bloom with the little flower and then I'm gonna do whoops calmeg why is it printing that again what the heck oh I didn't delete it after oopsies two of two where is one of two I need to delete. Delete. Okay. Figured it out. Okay, there's Calmeg. I just did a simple one. And then lastly is Diamond Nectar. Maybe I'll just write Diamond. Alright, so now I've just got to fill these bad boys. Let's start with Flora Micro. I do have a funnel, which should be helpful. I have like a tiny bit left in this one. And I'll open up this new one. Come on. Am I weak or something? I mean, I definitely am, but like, what the heck? not want this to go on my shirt oh oh gosh okay here we go i don't want to fill it up too high i could put some more oh I don't want to make a mess everywhere. Okay, I'm just going to put that much. Get this lid on. So that is all good to go. I'm going to go wash off this um, so that I can use it for the next one. This is kind of satisfying to do. I'm literally just going to repeat this process with all of these, so I will just speed up this footage. Enjoy! Okay, so we have all of our fertilizer um, components put into these bottles. So the next step of this is to measure out how many pumps equals the amount that I need to put in my bottles and my sprayer that I use for watering. Because I don't feel like it, I'll just calculate it the next time that I go to water my plants. So probably tomorrow morning if we're being honest. Um, but right now I want to carry on and put together our little mini prop box. I think I'm going to do sphagnum for this one and I'm going to put the domesticum wet sticks in there. So I'll bring that over here. Okay, I just stole some sphagnum from our bin that is still soaking. It can take a long time for 
sphagnum moss to absorb water like a few hours for like that big of a brick. But we've got some sphagnum loaded up in here. And this is a very easy job because I just have to take out the wet sticks that I already have in here. And we saw these the other day in my moss pole video. I cut up my entire philodendron domesticum. I won't go into it too much here, but basically it was not doing well. It was reverting in two different ways. <laughs> One of the stems is going all green and the other turned all variegated. So we're starting over. This actually fits them like perfectly, this little prop box. And I feel like it's so much easier to see in here to check on these versus with my like Tupperware bins or whatever the heck they're called, Rubbermaid bins. You have to like undo the latches and like you can't really see into them very well. But this, these ones, it's so easy to just check what's going on. I will say that these are not, oh, this one actually is better. This one doesn't close all the way. Do you see what I mean? There's a bit of a gap, but it still stays very humid. You can see the condensation, so I didn't really worry about it, but that's interesting. This one isn't like that. This one closes all the way. Hmm. As long as I keep them moist and watered though, I'm not worried about the gap in that one. All right, so we're back to having my Alocasia Maharani corms in here. I also added in some little, what is it called? String of turtles, Peperomia prostrata that are just chilling in there with those. And then our Philodendron domesticum are all set up in here. This looks so cool. Like I really enjoy the way that this looks. I might as well make a little, a little label for it while I've got my label maker here and everything. Philodendron. Dom domesticum Veriga verigata. Maybe I'll just put var because this is a little... Okay, that's cute. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and print this. Hello? a weird gap but that's okay super cute do y'all like label labeling things or not let me know i definitely get a lot of satisfaction <laughs> from labeling things and seeing things labeled oh almost too long, but I think it's fine. Good thing I put var instead of variegated or variegata. Look how cute that is. Oh, the glare. That looks so good. I'm obsessed. Okay, I'm gonna keep this on my Vistro shelf as well. Honestly, I could even stack these. They are stackable. I might do that for now until these start sprouting. Super cute. Look how nice this looks. I love it. I think that we've almost done everything. Let me check our list. Mm, oh, I was gonna wipe down the calyx. Why do I always put that on my list for these videos and then I never wanna do it? I should do it though, I should do it. And then I just have to come up with my November planty plans. So let's, I'm gonna tidy up here and then we can wipe down the calyx, take down my ghosties, I guess. And then 
I will do some planning for the month ahead and then we'll come back and chat. I'm gonna be keeping my ghost gardener, my gardening ghost up on this shelf. I keep this up year round. I love it so freaking much. But the rest of the Halloween stuff, I'm going to be moving off. I also think that I'm gonna to have to change this shelf soon in terms of the books because I noticed the other day that my books are literally getting destroyed being here on this shelf because this is next to the south facing window um so i was looking at them the other day and i was like why do the spines look so weird and they're literally getting bleached i would assume from the sun you can see this is all supposed to be this bright color and it's all faded and that's happening to multiple of my books down here which is so unwell um so i don't know what i'm gonna do if i'm gonna like put something there to block them or um just move them entirely i don't know but it's kind of sad i love having them displayed here too i love having them with the plants i think that it's so cute but yeah they are getting completely bleached so that's something that I'm gonna have to figure out here pretty soon too. not me updating the video in my literal pajamas so yes it is the next day i ended up walking around my collection and taking note of what i wanted to get done also made a massive repot list where i wrote down almost all the plants oh i just realized i missed one i wrote down almost all of the plants that i want or not that i want that need to be repotted not that i'm gonna do them all in november but i just thought it would be a good idea to make a running list since i was sitting down making a list anyways so hopefully i'll be able to get through a good chunk of them in november but it is unhinged let me show you so that is page one of my repots and it carries over to this page <laughs> like it's so many plants and then i also have a section that i called to deal with where my philodendron gloriosum is because just plants that like i need to address and i don't really know what i'm gonna do yet but they need to be addressed um or sometimes i do know what i'm gonna do like i have some ideas and then another one that i have on that section is hoya lacunosa mint coin which I think I'm going to change the trellis on that one. But again, I just need to deal with it because it's getting a little out of hand. I also have a to propagate section, a setup slash styling slash upgrade. So more of like a general kind of things that I want to do, which in that section, I have um, a couple of new grow lights that I want to install. So hopefully in November, I want to get a better grow light set up for my Monstera tie. And I also want to potentially add some grow lights above my glorious and escaletto for like my little climber like my large climber section and then i also want to do some more hoya trellising 
and I really want to try out. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I'm in the bedroom under the Soltec, what is it called, Highland track light. That's why the lighting is so crazy right now. But I also moved my Philodendron Splendid into the bedroom because I had to do some rearranging since I extended so many moss poles. And he's kind of living his best life in here. So yeah, that's who's beside me. But um, I want to experiment. I also have my Begonia Magdalene mats and I don't know if you can see her down here, but I want to experiment with some of my Begonias with offering them better support, or I guess. Yeah, I'm thinking mostly for Begonias. So I kind of want to try re-staking or re-supporting this plant with my wire mesh because it's very sturdy and I feel like I could put it into a pot with pond. I don't know if this is making any sense, but basically I'm wanting to experiment with plant supports and using my wire mesh in different ways, not just in a traditional moss pole way. So that's something that I want to try out this month. And then other than that, I just have for my November goals, get back into routine, bye-bye pests. That's all I wrote. So. Um, nothing too crazy. I mean, yeah, I've just got, there's just a lot of, a lot of chores and repots. Maybe fix some lighting situations, get some plants in a better support slash stake trellis situation. And that is kind of going to be the vibe. I decided to write it down in my little journal that I've been using recently because I, I don't know, I just feel like it's nice to physically have this in here and I can just look, see what I need to do, cross things off and kind of keep track and document it in here. So yeah, feeling good about that. But that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for hanging out and resetting with me. I hope that these videos help give y'all some different ideas when it comes to plant organization um, and just inspires you to try to stay organized and on top of your plant collection and motivated going into the next month because I know I always appreciate videos that give me that kind of feeling so yeah really hope that you enjoyed leave me a comment down below I would love to chat with you and I will see you in the next one bye Try